You see, this is the one thing that women do not understand. If women were not so jealous, so envious, so competitive with one another, we could be accomplishing a lot more together than we can apart. But because of the competitive nature of women, because they're always in competition with one another, it's as if women have come to believe that there can only be one. There can only be one top dog, as they say. There can only be one alpha female. And if you are in your femininity, we don't care to be alpha females. We care to be women who have bonds and genuine relationships with people that we can build with. We want to be the women who are spreading wisdom, who are spreading light, who are spreading love. But you can't get any of that if you are constantly in competition with one another. There are some women who cannot maintain friendships because of their competitive and jealous nature. Have you ever had a friend or had friends, you had a friend group, and you always felt like this person was in competition with you, but you just weren't sure, but you kind of picked up on cues by how they would talk to you? Have you ever noticed that, you know, if you decide to do something, all of a sudden that friend wants to do the same thing? Or you might have brought up an idea a week ago, a month ago, and then all of a sudden the friend that you told it to, they're now doing that same thing. You see that competitive nature, that not understanding that you don't have to be secretive. You don't have to be sneaky. You know, if somebody is your friend and they have a desire to do what you're doing, I'll use myself for example. Anybody can start a YouTube channel. I'm not saying you need permission from anybody. Everybody should have a YouTube channel in my opinion. But let's say a close friend of mine decided, you know what, I see what you're doing on YouTube and I think I'm gonna try that out. I have something to say, I have something to offer. I think I wanna do that too. If that person had a conversation with me, if they really showed me that, you know, I like what you're doing and I want to do that too. As friends, that's awesome. You don't need my permission, but it looks a lot less shady when we're having conversation about what you want to do and, you know, all that kind of stuff, rather than just going behind the back of the person and copying them. And, you know, while women, competition is not good amongst women, when you do slick things like trying to copy one another without showing that admiration for one another, it comes off as if you are a jealous, envious person. And that's the one thing that holds women back, holds women back from doing well together is their refusal to show admiration for one another. It's almost like women's egos are so big they're they're they, they they have so big an ego that they cannot fix their lips to compliment another woman they cannot fix their lips to say sis i really like what you're doing or sweetie i really like what you're doing i like your look i like how this looks on you i like how that smells where did you get that from women are so egotistical in a way and so prideful and a lot of these traits are more male identified so when women are more in their masculine it's hard for them to just give admiration to the women that they're around. So when they pop up and do these different things, especially when you're in a friend group, it can come off as very shady and very manipulative. And as if you've been copying someone all because you refuse to give admiration to that woman. And when a woman has a jealous, envious spirit, but yet she's very sneaky, she will never compliment you. She will never acknowledge what you do. She will belittle the things that you do, but then she will turn right around and copy, if not a little bit, your exact style. And that's where women mess up the friendships and that's where women can't really communicate with one another because we refuse to give admiration. We rather work in competition more than admiration. See, when you admire someone, people are actually more apt to help you. When you let someone know, like, I like what you're doing, normally they will lend a hand to help you in some way or let you pick their brain. But if you go behind their back and act like you're trying to be sneaky and do different things, that's when you have friendships that, you know, are more like enemies, your frenemies. You feel like you can't really trust that person. And believe it or not, you can't truly have a friendship 
if you can't confide in the person with which you call yourself friends with. If you feel like you have to walk on eggshells and I really can't tell her too much because if I tell her what I'm doing, she's going to turn around and copy me. And it's not that women, and I have to make this clear, and I speak for myself, copy me, <laughs> copy what I do, um, you know, the, the business acumen, the things that I'm going after. Look, if you want to eat well and you want to do well for yourself and you want to be well financially, there's nothing wrong with copying or following the strategy of another person. The issue comes in where you just completely take away their entire style without asking them or confronting them or talking to them or at least once again showing admiration and women have a way of doing that where all of a sudden they're in competition with one another where it never had to be that way and then you also have to watch out for the woman who normally wants what she cannot have when it comes to being jealous of another woman now this is on a deeper level because this comes more so in interpersonal relationships when you are close friends with someone and she might admire your life, but she admires your life to the point that she wants to take what you have. And a lot of women, I have seen and heard this happen a lot with women who allow the women in their lives to get too close in their circle, as in close with their husband, close with their family, where that woman swoops in and she becomes the lady of the manor. She becomes the woman in the home. All because you didn't see the signs that this was a jealous, envious, manipulative woman. There are a lot of women out there who, you know, you might mean well, you really want to help them. But while you think you're just doing a good deed and you're helping them, they're actually plotting to take your life from you. I'm not making this up. I've seen this happen where women just kind of skate in. And if the woman of the home is too comfortable and she allows that woman to come in, she will essentially take over your spot as woman of the house, woman of the home. See, in my house, I have a rule because, yes, we are Christians. We love to help people. But as far as hospitality goes, there will be no single women staying in my home. It's not because I don't trust my husband. It's because I, in my spirit, tells me not to have a single woman in your home unless that is a mother or an old auntie, a old auntie, okay? And that's just what it is. You can call it insecure. You can call it feeling whatever you want. But as a woman, especially when you are a married woman, speaking to married women for a moment, you have to always go with your intuition. Don't go with what it looks like. Go with your intuition. It doesn't matter with what it looks like to other people. Go with your intuition. You stay safe that way. Let the spirit guide you in that way. So a rule in my home is that there are no single women who are going to stay in my home unless it's a mother, old auntie, or my daughter. That's the only single women. So, and because of that, I feel like I shield myself and I shield my family from unnecessary drama because there are a lot of women who don't understand their role. I'll give an example. Um, one day without giving too much detail, I, a friend of mine, good friend of mine, you know, they help somebody out and the woman, she seemed very sweet, very kind, you know, she has a daughter, all of that. And in the beginning, she was just being, you know, asking permission to do things, you know, all of that. When she went and cooked, she cooked for her and her daughter. But suddenly she started cooking for the entire family. And then next thing you know, she was doing all these duties that look more wife-like in the house. The wife, she was unaware of how her role was being taken over. Slowly but surely, the role of the woman of the home was being taken over by that woman that she invited into her home. Needless to say, that marriage ended in divorce. That marriage ended with the woman intervening in the relationship and ultimately being with that was woman's husband. So when I say these things, I'm not saying this like something far-fetched. I've seen this happen. And because of that, this ties into the competitive nature of women. They will even try to go after your man if they feel like this is something they truly desire and they don't want to do the work that went into a marriage. That's the reason why, and this is my opinion, 
I think a lot of women like to go after married men because married men are different. They have a different mindset. They carry themselves differently. They, they just, they, they know how to do stuff. They take care of the family. They have that take care spirit. And when a woman doesn't want to go through the work of developing those skills of a wife and getting that out of a man, they like to swoop in on married men because they're advertising, they're appealing. Look, this man can go and buy, you know, whole big rolls of toilet paper. He know, he know to get 30 rolls of toilet paper at a time. He knows to make sure we got everything we need in the house. He's a nurturer. He asks, you know, your tires need to be rotated. Did you get oil change? You know, a lot of younger single men, they're not asking you these things, but those married, mature men, they're asking those things. They know how to keep house and keep wife. And when a woman is manipulative, when a woman is jealous and envious, she will not just go after you, she will go after yours. So you have to be mindful of that as a woman. And I can hear somebody now saying, well, you're teaching women how not to trust one another. You're part of the problem. You're teaching, nope. I am teaching women how to be aware. While I want to build community with women, we have to be like-minded. And there can't be women who think that swooping in on a married man is the right thing to do. And you don't recognize the flags, the red flags in women like that, unless you're made aware. A lot of women, unfortunately, are naive to the fact that everyone you call friend is not your friend. And once again, as I have said in other videos, this is the reason why a lot of women, I believe, have lost their lives, have lost their businesses, have had many situations that could have been avoided had they seen the red flags in the women that they are around. So as women... That competitive nature and that jealousy can run deep inside of some women. And you, as a wise, feminine woman, as a woman that is not naive, you're, you're understanding, you're gentle, you're gracious, you're merciful, but you're not naive. Being naive helps no one. And you have to be aware of the competitive, jealous, envious nature that a lot of women have. And when you recognize it, don't just overlook it as harmless because these behaviors can be very dangerous and they can have dire consequences in the future. So if you have someone like that in your atmosphere, in your environment, you want to make sure that you're distancing yourself from them and don't allow them to drive you crazy. Because see, a lot of women out of our desire to want to blend in and not cause any issues and we just want everybody to get along and everybody to be nice and that's just how she is. Sometimes you are gracious and merciful to a fault. You will put yourself in harm's way all because you're afraid of conflict. And while as women, we don't seek after conflict, but if it is something because you're worthy, because you're valuable as a woman and how you feel matters, the quality of your life matters, you can't just let people get away with treating you however they want to treat you. There takes a level of faith because as I believe, if you've been watching for any amount of time, you have to trust God with different situations, but God gives wisdom. He calls wisdom her. You have to have wisdom enough as a woman to know something's not right with her spirit. She needs the Lord. I'm going to pray with her. We're going to talk, but she's going to stay away from me. She's going to stay away from my family because I don't want to invite that spirit into my home. I don't want to invite that spirit into my life because there's something about her that just is not right. And that's not making it seem like you're better than somebody. That's just making it seem, or that's just saying that I acknowledge that something's not right here with this woman. There was another situation. I don't want to give y'all all of my business, but my husband, very nice man, he wants to help everybody too. And I warned him about a certain woman and Long story short, this woman crossed the line and I had to put her back in line because she tried to. She tried to cross the line. She was saying stuff and doing little stuff where I said, no, 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 no. And he's more like, don't worry about this. I'm not worrying about that. You're not worrying about it, but I'm aware of it. We're going to nip it in the bud right now. It's okay. It's okay. So as women, as women, I say that to say, I'm trying to be transparent without giving you all my business. But as women, we have to be aware and not allow things to just go over our heads out of that faux femininity, out of that faux humble, out of that faux just, I, I'm not worrying about it. It's okay. It's okay. No, everything is not okay. Sometimes you have to have time.
And you can deal with things and address things in a calming way, in a feminine way, in a civil way. But sometimes things have to be addressed because once again, you are worthy, you are valuable, and nobody should be able to just take advantage of you and it should be okay. So acknowledging that envious, jealous, wicked, competitive spirit that can be in women, that's of utmost importance. And when you recognize it, do not just let it blow over your head. Get away from it, acknowledge it, whatever you need to do, and be aware of it for next time. And hopefully, because there are women out there, there are a lot of women out there that are not jealous, envious, very self-assured, very confident, very much girls, girls. But it seems like as time is going on, they are more far and in between. So as women, we have to try our best to be that example of those women who don't carry that heavy, envious, jealous spirit, that competitive spirit. And I'm not saying that there aren't times where you're going to be in competition, where you're going to feel competitive. You know, a little bit of competition is good, but not in a malicious way. When I say competition, I mean, when somebody else is doing well, for instance, a lot of the people who are on YouTube, they motivate me. When I see the numbers that they're getting every month, when I see, you know, look at what I made in seven days, look at what I made in this, that motivates me. When I see other people in the space that I am in right now on YouTube doing very well, that motivates me to keep going. I'm not doing it because I can't stand them. It's not malicious. It's like, I want to do that too. It's admiration. So there's a difference. Nothing wrong with being competitive, especially in business. I'm more competitive when somebody tells me I can't. When somebody tells me, oh, you can't do that. You'll never be able to do that. That makes me want to do it even more. And it's not because, well, I'll show you. It's because on the inside of me, I know that I'm able to do so much more depending on what it is. Whatever your why is, your motivation, that's different than having a malicious, competitive, jealous spirit. I really hope you understand that. So ladies, be mindful of the competitive nature of women and don't allow their jealousy and envy. They're slick because just like the devil, I have to say the enemy, very subtle, like to slide things in there. You don't even notice it until the damage is done. And I don't want that for you. All right. Like and subscribe to the channel and share this content. Hit the notification bell so that you're aware when I post a brand new video. If you watch this video until the very end, put the high hill emoji in the comment section. I absolutely love to see it. Take care.